Time Traveler 5, a prose poem by Robert Rees. The car is driving south to the city. It is the view from the Interstate 80, basically from Berkeley to San Francisco. The view we saw the other day, it is dramatic and vast with fog and some patches of vivid blue. There are white sailboats circling Alcatraz and gulls are wheeling overhead. Your voice, your voice is conversational, even a little bit merry. Like you're just talking to a friend, maybe a friend from art school. I don't know where art comes from, really, the voice begins. Sometimes I think it's not even my business where it comes from. My business is to get out of the way when it does come, to just let the process of art making do the work. Let it do the heavy lifting. In the background is the San Francisco Bay with boats and gulls and wind and water. You continue. It's funny almost, the things you never expect or are not prepared for and how they turn the work, how they turn you. The bay scene fades to you in a chair in your studio. You're wearing black and your hair is up. You are looking away from the camera. Your head is slightly down. And then you raise your chin and turn your head and narrow your eyes slightly as though pondering something and look directly into the camera. There have been a number of phases in the painting the domestic scenes and the issues of parody and equality and circuses and boxers and the commotion of travel itself, but the drawing has always been my foundation, a touchstone, really. Always been the starting point. Here, you lean forward and bring your left hand to your chest as if grasping something dear to you. But after the exhibit at the Berkeley Library, something about my work, something about me shifted. There was a change. Something in the summer, in July. I was asked to participate in this exhibit, a group show in Carmel, a show devoted to the blacklist, Dalton Trumbo and the Hollywood 10. And they wanted Prometheus. Well, that was fine, and so I ended up taking Prometheus, this big narrative painting, and driving it to Carmel. On the way, there was a wreck, and I really didn't want to go on. I just wanted to get back and get back to my boys. But go to Carmel anyway, and when I get there, I'm tired and a little, a little upset. And of course, there's no one there, really. No one to meet me. And I have this big painting, and not a person in sight, and until finally this guy shows up and in shorts, <laughs> the gallery director. And it's funny because you never know. You can go along for years and nothing really happens. And then there's times when everything seems to happen at once. Or there's too much that happens and it takes time to sort out. You smile and turn your head slightly back and forth pondering the improbability of fate and all of it. But this guy, the director, gets distracted and I begin to carry this big painting into the gallery and finally this guy comes and helps me. You smile and shake your head a little. 
And I don't know, but he's persistent, asks a lot of questions, and somehow seems intent on injecting himself into my life. <laughs> Who knows? Here, he paused and looked south at the large paintings on the walls and smile a little. And he starts sending emails, but not regular emails. The emails he sends are biographical about me, but none of it's true. Not one word. None of it happened. He made up this portrait of me when I'm supposed to be 13 or 14 or something. It's supposed to be about how I became an artist because I never got around to telling him. So he made it up about me. And it takes place at some public swimming pool in Los Angeles about me going off a diving board and about how this diving board is supposed to be metaphorical or something about how I got started in art. It's crazy, really. And he's been writing this for months and I'm still stuck on this diving board. Anyway, he still seems to be around somewhere probably writing me emails about something. It's funny almost. Who would have thought? You can't make this stuff up. The camera moves closer now, and the shot is mostly of your face. You look away and then look directly in the camera. I'm not sure what this all has to do with art, really. I don't know. But I think we've fallen in love. I've certainly fallen in something. And you know what? That's fine with me, really. What's the difference on some level, you know, between love and art? Like John said, about art. Do you remember where he says, art, take something, do something, do something else with it? Isn't that like love? We'll see. <laughs>